Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to episode six of Children of the Night of Consequence and Regret. So, we start with a short recap of what happened last time. We managed to explore a little bit more about each of our beloved characters' personal lives. What? I'm, I'm so sorry. Let's... Your fan or something. It's making you Oh, fuzzy. my AC's <laughs> super fuzzy. Okay, hold on. I can... Is it like bad? Yeah, every time you talk. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can... A struggle, bro. Oh, hold on. Maybe I can... Oh, okay, hold on, I got this. You're just gonna have to settle for no coat then, dog, because I'm gonna lower it. Alright. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Do I sound fuzzy to any of you guys? Okay. You didn't it's sound fine. fuzzy initially, so... He's probably uh, listening to me with his bat ears. <laughs> okay, let's start again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Episode 6 of Children of the Night, titled of Consequence and Regret. I'd like to welcome all of you back by giving you a brief recap of everything that happened. We managed to explore some of our kindred's human lives, or maybe their mistakes and their pasts. We got to see in depth how maybe things have coalesced after their death. For some. And for others, maybe how their history continues to haunt their present. Whatever the case may be, we were rudely dragged to the present by a very ominous message. A message, of course, of a hand. Familiar hand. More so maybe to few than others, but nonetheless, a hand that was proverbially reaching out for help. It was none other than Amanda's hand, or what we would assume is Amanda's hand, as it did come from her phone. That being said, a coterie was of course not together. First bit. And they are not quite together yet now. So. So. We now take a quick moment to visit each of these kindred separately before our odyssey begins. Each of them may be going either directly to their haven to stock up or to their communal haven the urban brewworks to maybe stock up depending on what's there we don't really know until we get there of course so we'll go by person we'll start with none other than mr frank the one the only well 
whenever. So you went to your haven or did you go to the communal haven once you received the message? Mm, I would say this. Uh, I would go to communal haven only after the message and confirming that if everything is okay there. Uh, so the first thing that I was going to ask is, is everything okay at my haven? With the kids. But you'd have to make that choice yourself. You're not savvy on technology, so I, you're not really ca uh, unless you did. Without, unless some of them do have a message. With Wait, all hold due on. respect, with all due respect, I am the savviest person on technology here. I the guess only difference is I don't <laughs> I don't use the phone with the GPS. <laughs> I forget. Yeah, yeah, you have a flip phone technically. So would you would you message somebody? Would you call somebody? at yes, the haven will... do they have technology i mean the question is i'm pretty sure they are they're the thin bloods they're young enough to have some yeah of but it is your haven stupidity. so it's a permission thing correct it's your your location as it were yeah so someone uh, should have one of the most responsible ones i assume who will not keep uh the phone that will let him play anything beyond uh the snake whatever it's... game it is Flip-flop! <laughs> Freaking flip-flop! More flip-flops. Uh, okay, that's fair, that's fair. So you you give them a call, and what do you ask? Is everything is okay? Who would be, in your in your estimated and knowledgeable opinion, the the person you would call? Who's your most attentive and respective person? Would you go to your haven or would you go to the communal haven? And I will ask again: Was background recognizable? On the picture? No, it was. It was the street. It was. A, it was at night. It was the street. Maybe That's if fine. you tried hard enough and you matched a couple of things, you can maybe get like an idea. But it's not somewhere that you would pick up on the spot. That's fine. You know, it's, it's go, not. Yeah. Uh, I'll go to my haven uh, first to make sure that everyone is okay and grab stuff. So my haven. Okay. Okay, so you go to your haven. Yes. So. <sighs> to the people watching. Give us a, a generous description of your haven. So. From the outside and then from the inside. <sighs> All right. So from the outside, it is half-built building uh still undergoing construction you know that state of a building that is being reconstructed built and renovated for past five years and it expected to be done this year but you know that it will be done like in 10 years probably or maybe it will not <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of thing uh southern so, construction at its finest but in st louis yes. of course uh, it has uh, the decent amount of wear and tear already, so that's recognizable that it's been there for quite a while. And uh, on the outside, there's like the walls uh, holding off the unwanted visitors and half-torn uh, half uh, poster, you know, of the construction company uh, that just says, under constructions and under underneath there is a slogan quality craft craftsmanship fueled by partnership mm, and when 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 somebody has the balls the gall the ability to trepidate inside of your haven what would it look like so it's obviously his place is not on a first floor uh but again it is the, you know, the homeless haven made decently comfortable. So uh, when you start walking, there is a bit of dirt. There is the uh, graffiti on a wall inside the building as well. Mostly the distasteful ones, like, you know, fuck you, screw society, all mm. that stuff. All the anarch graffiti. <laughs> Love uh, it. Technically, just, you know, not really anarch. Mostly the unwanted social class and all that 
you know. The dregs, the dregs uh, of society. Yes, the dregs of society is the very good way to put it. Uh, so, so, what do you visit first? He will go up to the second floor that is considered more of a living place and uh, check first, frankly, the common room where safe to say it is a small amount of, you know, like fire, the uh, barrel with a fire, very classic interpretation, very classic view, even under this light. I assume Kindred wants something like that, wants something warm even in the cold nights. Yeah, nights here is not re are not really that cold, but it's still nice. But without any some... roof over your head, it can get a little cold. Yeah, cold, there there, there sure. is the pieces of the roof, obviously, but you know it's half there, half not there. Frankly, though, despite that, there is the light sources. Electricity seems to be the part of this building. Is just you know, we wonder it's how wired that happens. There. It's, we wonder yeah. how that happens. We smart. wonder who's paying that bill. Know, we yeah. wonder who's we wonder who's paying that bill. <laughs> so we will not discuss who pays the bill. You you arrive to the common room, as it were, and of course you see Hopper and a few others with their hands on the fire a little bit, and they're not too close because thin blood or not, they're still kindred. But it's just enough for the glow and the glaze to keep them warm and to keep the cold away. Everyone is okay. He looks at them, mostly trying, counting his people, you know, like he's actually, if someone notices, he like looks at them and like nods, 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 like almost counting yeah. them in my head. <laughs> A little tally sheet. <clears throat> Hopper nods to you. And Hopper's kind of unimpressive. He's got bushy blonde hair. He's he, he could have been a skater bro in life, but he's in the middle of the country, so somehow that just doesn't add up. Maybe he came from somewhere else. A lot of these guys come from somewhere else. You know, they're not wanted in their home city. Most kindred find their way outside of a big city due to persecution, especially if they're thin bloods or they don't fit into the right sect. And he reaches around to make sure he hasn't received any missed calls he's got just like you a nokia brick that could probably serve as a as a sort of a, a weapon in in case of any issues and <clears throat> he doesn't yeah i mean we're, we're we're fine are you are you looking for someone what happened yeah amanda was supposed to be here i don't i don't think he she's here right now it's it's not Hopper who responds to you, but it's a uh, a bit of a stocky female. She's got hair kind of cut to a bob right here, and she's got a tattoo under her eye with a little What's lightning her? strike. Name. Her name is Wing, like the Wing, mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, that's not her actual name. Lord knows she'd actually tell you that, but, but that's why. Wing I... says, "Yeah, of course, good man, Wing." points a finger she says uh i think she was at your beer garden beer place the beer area she or she said she would she said she was gonna look for one of the ugly ones i'm not quite she, sure she was supposed to stay here and get back in shape have you seen something suspicious in the area someone walking around they all look at each other, kind of like the Three Stooges, trying to figure out between all of them if their brain works. No, 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 not that I'm aware of, no. No. Good. I don't have to repeat myself, but be careful with contacting people. Not that again. He just Popper taps on the phone and it. says, Yeah, I'm tired of Snake, but I guess it's the safest thing. When we're bored, right? Yes. If anything, message me. I need to get some things. And again, be careful. Hey, hey, Frank, says one of them. Uh, a yeah. tallish guy. Got a couple of scratch marks on his faces. Can you get us cable? I'll think about it. Yes. 
<laughs> and in the background, you just hear critters just chur, 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 walking all around you and all around the building. And one of them just kind of like scoots them away. Ah! Disgusting, 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 disgusting. Get no traps. Yeah, we're, we're, we're running out. Yeah. You go to stock up. What do you bring with you? So, again, there is the his own private stock is a small stash of stuff it, it will technically surprisingly it will be the back uh with without the instruments first that he will pull out uh there is just something clanks in it and he like puts it on his shoulder uh there is like a very shuffly sound of paper moving around all that stuff mm-hmm. so aside from that there's also he didn't hide the gun. He he never left the gun. So he again he just places places everything up. Cox the uh, like tr- tries the gun, uh, the smaller one, not the sawed off shotgun that he has tied under the belt. And uh, no explosions today, yet. No. For now, there are some. He knows where to get them anyway. Uh, but the other thing that he had preparing, where he had a chance, uh, there's this small bag of, uh, you know, what's the proper word? The smoke mines, you know, the uh, the flash, the handmade flash, so phosphorus things, whatever. Yeah. Like, as the bright, yeah. Little trap so bombs, he, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he gets some of them. Okay. He has a set of particular skills, and he will he's ready to use them if someone to command them. So you take flash bombs, smoke bombs, and what else? No guns, well, no weaponry? Uh, no, I did say that he gets the guns. He gets, he gets his uh, tools for, well, sorcery. Uh, and uh, actually, the... Uh, What's the word? The screw, uh, the screw bar, just a small one. Crowbar. Like, uh, crowbar, yeah. That just he can place and fit. Not the biggest, you know. So any anything useful for the tools, anything to open the doors, be it very gotcha. gentle. Uh, Lars- and larcenic tools. Yeah, he he's good at that. So larcenic yeah. tools, a bit of a tech as well to connect to the stuff if necessary. Everything very packed. Everything is very isolated. Very easy to grab. A bit of a mindset, Wonderful. you know, like of a very particular person who knows where to place it, how to place it, where the tools should stay. So then he like ties things up, looks at the uh, watch lying there, just shakes. Closes dump. Uh, we watch with like the teddy bear and you know, like very childish one. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And then you head on over to what I imagine is UBW Urban Brewers. Yes. Wonderful. They're not far from you anyway, but they're not. They're mm-hmm. not. Yeah. So that moves us on to the next person, Miss mm-hmm. Callisto. After you got rid of your stalker and you managed to escape without the glare of your the object of your obsession, where did you go to? Did you go to directly to the communal haven or did you go onto your place to maybe put on a different jacket or take the high heels off and put on some boots? Or did you just go straight? I just go straight. <laughs> Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So, no preparation for her dear Callisto. She's going to, as they say, ham fist it. Then moves us on to our wonderful Letty. My dear Letty. You, you went to your haven to exchange your ring ring for a vroom vroom. Mm-hmm. Did you... Did you get anything from your haven? And if you did, give us a moment to describe the exterior of your haven and then, of course, the interior of it for those watching. So the exterior of her haven just looks like a standard 
um, apartment building, uh, brick walls, very nondescript, kind of blends in with everything. Oh. Um, but the interior, she has it very well done. Um, it's a efficient place. As soon as you walk in, bed, couch, everything's just kind of right there. She can get in, get out quickly. Um, obviously, she has all of her effects kind of everywhere. Her treasures, as you will, kind of scattered around. Um, aside from that, it doesn't look very well lived in. Like, she's almost never home. So here's a question for you. That one treasure that your partner is dying to get his hands on, is that in plain view or is that sort of like a trophy that you hide? Uh, nope, it's in plain view. Ah, uh, is it like dastardly in plain view? Like, like if he were to come visit, he'd be like this bitch because it's just hanging somewhere or is it just like on a table? Just like anything else, really? Uh, it is a statue. Um, a small statue, something that like uh, in Egypt when they would put uh, like organs inside of the little, uh, little ah, things. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, uh, she has that uh, just kind of out there, like in plain view, just like on her desk. Like a paperweight, you mean? Yeah. So somebody wants to kill you over a paperweight. My gosh. Mm -hmm. So you, of course, get to your haven. Lovely, not as lived in. And you have two men, one at the door and one inside, and they're just nodding. They, one of them is kind of nodding off. You can tell it's almost the changing of the shift for him. And another one comes out from the kitchen and says, Miss Letty. Is there anything we can get you? And in his hand, admittedly, is an apple. And a knife. Um, my bike. I'll grab the rest. Say less. And he radios somebody. Not really radios, they have like walkie-talkies, it's not as fancy. And he goes, she's gonna need the bike, if you can just pull that up, let them know. And you just hear from the back of the radio, like, copy, copy, copy. What do you grab? What do you take? Being, um, of course, your dismembered friend's hand, you know that they're not, they're not in the business of having fun. They're in the business of causing pain. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to grab uh, my dual pistol holster. Gonna. Well, take off the dress that I was wearing, change into some regular clothes, uh, just like black jeans and a t-shirt. Uh, dual pistol holster, I'm going to put uh, both of my firearms in there. Um, I have a belt that I can put my mags on, so each of those are going to have two additional mags on top of what I already have in there. Um, I'm going to have my lockpick set, and I'm going to have like a small little backpack, like one of those little thin ones that you put like a laptop in, and I'm going to throw Like in... a satchel type joint. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm going to throw in, there's my character sheet. Oh, I'm going to throw in my knives, um, three, uh, emergency caches of blood, uh, one hundred foot hemp and rope, a crowbar, a bag of, um, ball bearings. I was wondering what this meant. I was like. I forgot what the name was. Uh, ball bearings. Um, and... A, uh, a sun bag. Sun bag? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh my. <laughs> Wonderful. You grab all your stuff, it clinks and it clanks, and you just clutch it on over you and put the bag on top. It's tightly packed. And one could confuse you for the Ministry Lara Croft. <clears throat> you exit your way out and you head on downstairs. And the bike is already waiting for you. 
What do you ride? What is your bike? I have a Ducati Monster 696. Aha! And this one, I presume, does not go ring ring. It does. You nice. put a bell on that too? I did. I did. It's my uh, signature thing. The meme will never habit. die. <laughs> It goes ring, ring. Wonderful. So, as the camera pans off into your motorbike roaring alive, and the gate slowly opens up, the night guard nods off to you, one of your men, of course, who's infiltrated quite well. And all we can hear as we see the tracks burn into the floor is ring, ring, as you ride off into the night. Urban Brew, you're the furthest from Urban Brew Works because you live in a nicer part of town that sort of disappears into itself. And we are now left with entropy. Do you go to your haven or do you go straight to UBW? You have, of course, just, just left the hotel you were casing out. You didn't necessarily directly engage so much as make sure that it is a prime target. In that case, Be reminded that there is still a gaping flesh wound in your stomach. That is true. I'm going to head back to my crypt, which I see has a few additions now. And try my best to heal. Heal or patch up. So you would like to heal your wounds. Correct. Let's go for the roll. What am I rolling? Give us a second. I should. Do we have that table here, Mr. Frank? It I should be direct. It needs to be done, but yeah. yeah. I thought we had a table for that though. No, because he's not healing aggravated damage. No, he's just healing the normal it's one. Just a, yeah, um, it's just a, a normal heal. So it doesn't. You don't need a table if you open your character sheet and click on blood. You will see how much you heal. So the only thing you will need to do is just to rouse the blood. Now we had. Oh no! That the, the the thing is for aggravated damage. It's different. Okay. You succeed by one, and you heal the one point. Sadly for you. Uh, did I have a chance at? Rolling more than that, or I believe, um, I believe you can. I believe it's one per. I'm not. Am I co am I correct in assuming that it's with um with with aggravated? You can only heal once per night, right? No, it's only it's one only time aggravated. period. Yeah, That's yeah. Only aggravated. Normal can be healed. Whatever you want, as long as you're ready to pay hunger. Go for it, buddy. Uh, oh, so just you can heal again once again. So long as you don't, so long as you can sustain being hungry, you can heal as much as you want if it's not aggravated. Damn. So you heal, but you get hungrier. Let's do one more. Damn. <laughs> oh, that's too hunger. <laughs> Whatever. So you feel it. You feel it right here and right here, and maybe even in the back of your head. The hunger is just starting to claw. It was. It was doable before, but now, no, I'm sorry, you're not at two hunger. You're, yeah, you are at two hunger, right? Yeah, you're at two hunger. So. Wait, were you up? Oh, yeah, it's automatic. I apologize. Yeah, because you had eaten somebody. Um, so. You are at your crib and it's it's, it's not much. You know, it's it's a few things. A dusty bed. There's like a table. There's a little bed stand. There's like a day chair. Which is a night chair, really, for you. Um, but it's an improvement. Your friends were kind of feeling a little bad for the squalor with which you were staying in. Do you take anything? Do you have anything to take in this place? Good old reliable. Lefty and righty? 
Right. Hannah everybody. and Palmella. <laughs> gotcha. Right. So you take Hannah and Palmella over to UBW. I'm assuming you're gonna make good use of your Lamborghinis, your Chevrolets, or do you Ooh, manage this. to have an oop oof again? That makes four times. No, and of course I hit the no talking option. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take a ride share service? A ride to what? You take a ride share service. And you arrive at UBW. So. You let's see here. Do you all enter through the front or through the back? Now, are you are you checking out your are you checking out your your business's development or are you just going straight through the back? Uh, Letty's going to go into the front. I never enter in any building from the front. I go through the employee's door anyway. Gotcha. So, you go through the back. Letty enters through the front. So, the front of Urban Brew Works has pretty much remained the same. There's just been a few additions. The place itself has a lot more window real estate now. Um, it feels a lot more inviting. And... Do you two enter through the front or the back? Your Callisto and Entropy. Ladies first. No, I guess guys first. <laughs> I was just going to say the front. What about you, Miss Callisto? The front works. So you guys get to see the new and renovated lounge for Urban Works. It is without a doubt that Frank has been hard at work making the place seem a little bit more inviting and he's incorporated the second floor of Urban Brew Works. Though it's still not visible to the first floor guesting clientele, it is very apparent that something else is now going on on the second floor or will be going on real soon. He's received direct attention from Letty as well, of course. So this is where we get to the fun part. The staff greets you, and one of the men greets you in the back, Mr. Frank. He's one of um, the Baron's men. You have, had, you have some of your Thin Bloods here now, but they're not working security. They're doing something completely different. They wouldn't be the security type. You're all greeted. You're all nodded to. It's very aware. They're very aware now who runs the place, who's in ownership of the place. I need to check something. A security room. So you go to the security room. The yeah, rest I of need, you... I need goddamn cameras. The rest of you make your way inside. Callisto, you're kind of used to it, but it, it's never a dull day when the help can stop ogling you. They look at you a little too long, and their stare is kind of directed and pointed. I ignore it. I'm used to it. The heads roll in dissimilar fashion. And you could swear that the stare on your ass lasts a little too long for good customer service. But you're used to it, as you said. The bar back greets you as he's taking care of stuff. He says the Mr. Frank is in the back. Any points? He always doesn't know how to take you guys. He's aware of what's what you got kind of aware of the situation. He's just new to your kind. I'm gonna sit at the bar. You're gonna sit at the bar? <laughs> or actually I'm gonna head over to the bar and be like I hope you know that 
the the beverages served to you guys are not served at the bar just yet. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I'm just gonna head over to uh is it the only the bar back or there's also a bartender as well. I'm gonna head over to the bartender. Hey, can you uh send something to the back for me real quick? Kind of uh they're, they're working they're working on that. I suggest you go and see it firsthand. They're about to be done. And she nods to the both of you as well. It, I suggest you all go back there and see what they're doing. Sounds good to me. Miss Letty? Um, Miss Callisto? Before uh, Letty heads upstairs, she's gonna... Have you seen um, Amanda? Did she come through here? Amanda, Amanda, her brain is trying to rack all your names. Mask, right? Mask? Yes. Mask. Yes. Yes. She was speaking to a blonde girl. Kind of preppy, kind of bartender-y style. And they went to the back. And then I believe the blonde is somewhere in the... But I... she got permission from Amanda, so we didn't really say anything. All right, thank you. And Letty's just gonna hook it upstairs. <laughs> the lab is, of course, now on the upper floor. Some of it, anyway. The the frontward facing parts of the lab are upstairs. You, Mister Frank, look at the security camera. That I do. And you clickety clackety, click, 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 pan, pan, pan. You notice Noel arrive. And Noel is, of course, talking with Amanda. They're having a bit of a chat up front. Noel is looking like her disguised blonde self. Yes. You said disguised, and uh, I do remember that Noel is Nosferatu, right? Yes, she's got the mask of a thousand faces. Yeah, it's not showing up on cameras, unless she has so. But that's fine. I mean, if yeah. she's, uh, I will you, recognize you, her by you notice, the murkiness. You, you notice yeah. her. You notice her. Her. Her mm -hmm. stature and her clothes. Yeah, because that, that, she is fine. wearing the bartender outfit. Yeah, I mean, if she or was, the, then the cafe I'll outfit. know more yeah. about you, her. You, you know, you know, you'd know immediately by seeing her because she wears that same sort of preppy yeah. look. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, if she, if she was disguising herself on camera. Now I know that she is quite strong. So yeah, that's absolutely. To click for me. Now, now you know. It's a subtle hint, my friend. So, <clears throat> and she. They're talking, and Amanda leads her sort of excitedly upstairs, so I guess they can see what's being worked on, and you can't, you don't really have audio in certain areas. You do have audio in the back. You do have audio in the lab and in the rooms. Yeah, I'll follow them, like, know the timestamp, uh, go through the other cameras on that timestamp to just attract and follow them. As you do that, you just see, it's just conversation. It's just conversation and they get up to the lab and you see what everybody's been getting up to and they're sampling what seems to be cups of blood in a way and you can tell that Amanda's not really trying anything because it wouldn't be her style but she's definitely giving Noel different cups to sample I'm assuming by that pension all three of you head on up to the lab as well to the back as it were quickly shift camera to something that doesn't have the blood in its scope yet because i didn't think about feeding myself yet mm. and you explicitly forbade me to do so, so i know <laughs> but you're gonna see why my friend i know so you all you all head up while frank is still hard at work and you screen up to the last moments where um noel takes out 
a list of uh, like a little paper and she points at a man she points at it to Amanda and they're pointing at different locations and you can tell it's got names and addresses from what you can see you know because it's it's a couple of papers I, and she's I pointing can't. this and she's pointing this and she's saying yeah I can't see a side is shit enough to read that so yeah 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 but you notice that me. she's pointing and she's doing and it's almost an exposition of you go here you go there here no and she shakes her finger and they're having a conversation and amanda has a nice little notepad out and she's taking notes and she's writing stuff down you could almost recall that amanda promised to help find people for noel's friend yeah and then the last thing you see of amanda is placing a hand on Noelle's shoulder, nodding to her, and then heading on out through the front door. Out onto the night. Nothing crazy, nothing out of order. And as we pan away and back to our team, our other group, you guys are welcome to the back end, the, the home end of the top area, where all the goodies are being produced and it does indeed feel like some sort of lab it feels like some sort of production environment this area is of course the back end of the house for you guys on the second floor ideally your customers wouldn't have access to this ideally and what you see is a very large, almost rectangular section of what is the entire field of UBW on the second floor, sectioned off by a door, which, can you guys see that as an aside? They want to do this? So that would be where you're entering from, right? And... Where you would expect to see scientists, you see people in regular clothes. These are... Rabble is a disrespectful word for our good employees. But they are they are a bit lower on the dressing totem pole. But they're hard at work. And they're mixing a couple of things. And you see what feels to seem... Or seems to feel like... Pseudoscience and, and mixtures and a lot of different weird concoctions going on. But there's a lot of blood. In fact, blood is the most potent smell in this enclosed room. And if you're at a hunger of two or more, there's like a slight itch of your attention. Like just going towards towards the blood. Just like a slight Yes. In that case, I'm going to walk right up to the production. And I'm going to tap on the nearest worker's shoulder to get his attention. You see a tall man, and he's wearing what feels like a tank. What feel, feels like your typical meth 101 starter kit. He's got a tank top on. He's got these yellow, sort of like jumpsuit pants. It's dragging down, like half of it is dragging down with some boots on, and he's got gloves on. And he turns around and he goes, hey, yo, what's up? Hey, Escobar, you got a sample for me? Kind of hungry. You didn't have breakfast? No, things happened, okay. I, I burned some calories. Boy, do I have some shit for all of you. Well... Depends on what you like, of course. So, we've been messing around with a few things. We managed to get alcohol into the system, but we've also managed to fiddle with emotions a little bit. Depends on what you're looking for. You want to feel aggressive tonight? You want to feel sensual? We can Maybe. always put depression in a bottle too, but you know. I think the latter. He looks at you like a little weirded out. Although less depression, more nothing. If you have that flavor in stock yet. Less air and more water? 
bro. Like, you what? don't have that flavor, do you? Yeah. And he kind of like, Bella, come here. And what seems to be like the most strung out imitation of a Harley Quinn you could find walks on over to you. She's got the torn fishnets. She's got the booty shorts, and she's got the uh, the tri the I mean the the bipartisan color shirt. And she goes, "What's up?" He wants. Tell her what you want. I want the flavor. Have you guys named your flavors yet? This is not a confection store, okay? Hey, I want to make sure you guys get the branding on point if we're going to do this. I didn't see you here when we were working on that. Hey, well, now I'm interested. So, anyway. Clearly. As I, as I was telling your uh, esteemed colleague over here, I'm looking for something, sure, I guess more on the on the depression side, but more of nothing. If you have that, you know, you look like you've um, seen those type of days. I'm sure. If words could slap, you would feel it. You know, I don't have to take the shit from you. Okay. Yes. But I think do. I know what. Wait till Frank gets here. <laughs> but I think. I know what you're talking about. She oh. whips her hair and it hits a little a little bit of it hits you on the beard as she whips her hair back. And they grab uh Letty, if you'd be so kind to raise your exemplar bag. One of those Is and it's label? got it has a label and the color it's color coded and the color code on this bag is black so you guys did get the branding down nice we're working on it we're working on it he says to you now hold on let me just i, I know how your kind is and he Pops a little. I'm sorry. <laughs> Her face just killed me right now. <laughs> he pops a little. Um, he pops uh the cork on it a little bit, like a little plastic tab on it, and he pours it into a clean glass. And he gives you about half a glass, and he says, "Try this." I uh, I swig it around like it's wine and smell the aroma. It's... I... I didn't take a You're sip have... yet. The sound effects are not needed. <laughs> it feels like... It smells like... Iker. Like some well-cooked Iker. Like... Like dark, sweet sugar that has been almost burnt a little bit. With hints of musk and woodiness. I take a sip. How's it taste? It washes your palate. And there is a, a hint of... Desperation. And and notes of loneliness. And, and emptiness. And it is definitely refreshing... Your specific mood. For the night. I chug it. That's hitting. That's hitting. He says to you. You've got a. Can I get one for the road? He goes. He gives you the rest of the bag. If you consume the whole bag, it'll take away a dot of hunger. Okay, so what I just consumed now, it only took away half. A it's dot. like half, <laughs> technically, not even really. It's a sampler. Okay, fair enough. I just chug the whole bag. You could pre send inside. the whole bag. Hey, somebody has to clean that. What's wrong with you? This your is your job. business. No, 
We're production, we're not janitorial services. You goth asshole. I bet you didn't treat Spencer's like this. I slapped the shit out of it. He moves out of your way quite quickly. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Can I or you're not gonna get any more of that shit. Drag him away from him with, by the back of his jacket. You can try absolutely. If he doesn't resist, you can hug him away. Ear, ear, use ear, use the ear. Use the ear. <laughs> use the ear. <laughs> Come here. I'm gonna attempt to dodge that and keep going towards this disrespectful fuck. Oh my! So is this a? Oh my god! <laughs> So roll a grapple, roll grapple, my dear Callisto, and he has to roll dexterity and athletics. What's grapple under? It'd be under melee with a specialty. Oh wait, yeah, we could do. Can we do? Wait, no, not melee. Um, um it's brawl. Brawl, brawl, brawl. Confusing the words. Yeah. Can you imagine she super succeeds the brawl roll and just yanks the fuck out his ear? <laughs> so I clicked brawl. And uh, Brawl and yeah, she, you're shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> I think my camera's too fickle. Sorry. Michelle. It's the challenge. She's she's shrinking away from the challenge. <laughs> uh, so it's brawl strength. Yikes. Brawl strength. Yeah, brawl strength. Oh, the wind goes to the acting vampire. <laughs> you're quick, you're fast, you're not lightning. You feel a cold grasp on the side of your ear and it just tugs you to the side with force. If you were alive, you'd probably feel it getting yanked off. Behave now, Entropy, you're better than I am not one of your little uh, uh, puppies. Uh, 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 I just I just keep pulling him away. <laughs> <laughs> as Can if I... to soothe you, as if to soothe you, the girl sees you getting dragged away and she tosses you a bag with another black dot on it. Uh, I take it, shove it in my pocket, and I look at that piece of she... shit and I say, I'll see you at the next conference meeting. He goes, if you kill the help, who's going to make it for you, dumbass? And then he goes back to work. <laughs> the girl looks at the, the other two of you as you hear a door opening. And I assume, Frank, you're going up to the lab, I would imagine, right? Yeah. Take it to HR. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the door open and she says to the other two of you, is there anything you guys would like to try this this is the fruit of your half labor she says with a chuckly grin we have everything or almost everything we even have bits of something as you saw your friend request for so i don't care enough just anything oh she's frank oh you look grumpy. And if you guys look at Frank, his face is animalistic almost. He is. He's there. You know, you know what that look is like because you've been there before. When you're so hungry, you could if the if the wall had blood, you'd lick it up. You'd you'd commit a letty and lick it from the floor if you needed to. N never go full letty. <laughs> Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> As Entropy says, it's full of protein. <laughs> I'm going to so, look towards Frank and be like, Hey, uh, Frank, uh, you could use something. Want to taste of nothing? Might make, some, might make things worse for you, but... That sounded very, very wrong. I mean, you're looking a little pissed off. Maybe you need a, a bit of a downer. If that's the if that's your joke of testing nothing, then it's a bad one. I'm just saying, you look like you could feel a little less right now. But 
Yeah, I know. You should drink something. Wait, but was it something I didn't understand? Your face. Cutting the conversation. <laughs> no. <laughs> Cutting the conversation. You get a um a bag with what is a purple dot on it. And she says, try this. Or would you need a cup? I know you're very particular about these things. You're talking with whom exactly? Yes, right now? with you. With you, Frank. Oh. The person who needs it the most. Not picky. So he'll just grab it and uh, it will ver- it will be very quick and we'll be like... Hmm. Yikes, everybody's just hungry tonight. Yeah, 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 I see that. It's you a miracle. wash the crimson liquid down your throat and the emotions that course through it, there's sort of like a, a sad, sort of like a scared emotion. It, 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 it gives you hints of of burnt fruit and and deep depression but as it washes over you it feels invigorating and you feel the edge at your throat the burning sensation ease for just a moment she nods and says good shit good shit you always want more she yeah. puts she presses another one on your chest this is all i have from this one particularly right now but we're making some more but take this trust me and she, yep. she you drink drinks. it right now yeah so you you drink again yeah so you're down to two hunger and for the rest of the night the next time that you use obfuscate or fortitude you'll have a bonus to your rolls. Just remember it's a, that. It's a weird sense of melancholy. A weird sense of depression. And I forgot to explain that to you as well, my dear Entropy. The next time that you use your Oblivion, oh, I you'll know. have a bonus to your roll. That's why I took it. Do either of you consume anything, my dear lady? You see the different bags with different colors, and there's even like small annotations. One says Italian woman, the other one says South American male, one says black hair, the other says blue eyes. And you're in the background. Get me that batch of of blonde hair over here. Come on, let's go. Being now she says she kind of rubs her she pretends to rub her beard she goes like this she goes ah bring that over here and she nods to a man who's walking with a bag that has a big patch of a red circle with a little bat on it and she takes out the bag and she says try this and you of course take your proverbial sip from the bag it feels like anger like violence like like you caught somebody like whoever gave you this just came from beating the ever living shit out of someone and it tastes like passion wine like fire and and strong fruit it tastes smoky and almost acidic at points and it energizes all of your being and the next time that you use potence you will have a boost to your potence just as an aside to all of you dear players, there are alternatives to each blood. So for example, 
when Mr. Frank drank, he could use fortitude or obfuscate. Entropy, unfortunately, as a total lack of any, any feeling, anything in the blood, it feeling just devoid of anything, he only gets boost to oblivion. Takes me and back a couple years. Callisto gets the, the option between celerity and potence. But she doesn't possess celerity, so potence. Which leaves us to Letty. The smell of blood is mm, 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 all over. Do you resist? Or do you take a drink? Uh, she's going to take a drink. So what are you in the mood for? What are you looking for? She wants something. Our bargain bin Harley Quinn looks at you like. Funny. Mm. Something happy. Mm. You know. It's kind of hard to get happy when you're being sanguinated. But. You know we got it, bitch. You know we got it. And she, like, waves her hair and it almost hits entropy again. Bruh. She's fluttering away, but it doesn't this time. <laughs> and she walks on over and she pops a squat in front of you and her skirt kind of goes. And she pulls a bin open. It's a little cold, but it's not fractionated. Okay? This was the first thing that we tried. We figured there'd be some happy-go-lucky type. Although you don't look like it. And in a bag, there is a bright pink with a little heart in the circle. And she pulls out a bag and she kind of lofts it up to you. Catch. gonna snatch it one hand grip odell beckham mm -hmm. and you of course take your sip and to say that it is it feels like fruit punch it it, it tastes of fruit punch and sweets and fire but like passionate fire like excitement like almost like giggly cuddly flirty emotions run through your mind and your body and it energizes you in a way that you haven't felt in a while it feels like you're seductive but you're also happy and ecstatic and it does wash over you in a way that nothing else has and for the next for the end of the night the next time that you use your presence ability well, or blood sorcery, but you don't have blood sorcery, if I'm correct. You will get a boost to your rolls. She claps her hands. She goes, all right. Anything else? Boyfriend, girlfriend, pet, dog, cat. What do you want? Amanda. I saw her talking to Noel here. We have her flavor. She looks at you like, you know, that expression, you know? <laughs> From behind a far cabinet, you see a face pop up, and it is Noel. And she's sitting in one of the donor's chairs, sipping from a bag, mm. and just squeezing. What? So you didn't leave. Good. And she continues to... No. No, I did not. And she leans back. Well... Uh, I don't want to 
scream throughout the room, so he will actually go to her. <laughs> to the donut. <laughs> As wow. you venture around, you see that she's sitting back with her legs spread, and she is having the time of her life. She's maybe on her fifth blood bag. And she Weird. has the same face that Letty has right now. Where she's just... Well... I... How about you tell us where Amanda went? Oh... He didn't go with you guys? He will just open the flip-flop, and there is a very low pixelated picture of a fucking hand. That's why he didn't recognize the background! <laughs> And immediately she, not to be one to waste, not what not, of course, slurps the whole bag and throws it on the floor and gets on up. And she snatches the phone from you almost. Oh, fuck. This, is this her? It looks like it. Shit. She no. scrambles her body for uh, a paper. She pulls out the paper. She goes... This. This is what I presented her. I'll it was. I'll look at the others. So, like, to make sure that they are getting closer. If they are. Yeah. That is a verbal yes for all our audio listeners. Some people are too busy inhaling their their meal. Well. Yeah, I saw you discussing this I gave her a set of addresses for my friend he promised to help him out um promised to give us a hand with everything and so I didn't want her to go alone but she said that she works a little better on her own she didn't look in the best of shapes but I mean who are we to say anything about how people look. Yeah. And she last gives you that knowing cousinly nod, Frank. <laughs> yes, like last time she worked, she ended up like us. Better? She says jokingly. I know. Look, I can, I can, I can walk you to where she went, but if I'm honest with you, I, 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 just, it's not a good area. It's not a good neighborhood. Just discuss, tell what we were discussing. I assume she went to that place. He points like in the direction of where she was pointing at the map first, like yeah. on, on the video. So he pulls out from her chest pocket a what's like a square folded up map and she just begins to undo it and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it's like a map of St. Louis proper and she puts it on the table do and I, she looks do you what? do we anyone one of us I will not be uh, the one who will say I anymore uh, do any one of us recognize uh, the area on the map like who is responsible who is the known kindred there what's the heck there because if it's above the uh, well if it's above the arch right uh, on the map uh, that is something that's I can know, or maybe someone else. Yeah. Callisto and... And... You, Frank. Each of you give me... An intelligence... Mm -hmm. And... I want to say intelligence in either academics or awareness. We're going to play with awareness in a really fucky way. Maybe uh, oh, investigation, if you have it. Maybe. Or so insight. Streetwise is adaptive. If we are streetwise, could work as well. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you know an area, yeah, streetwise can also work. In terms of academics, I mean, frankly, you know what? I will roll if you allow it. The same, uh, it'll actually be harder for me, but fuck it. We never do it. Can I roll politics? 
I don't see why not. Maybe. Yeah, we can, we can work something around that. Yikes, Callisto. You had that, actually. The pain. Yeah, we, we you can also that. remember that you can use your willpower to re-roll die if you don't like your success. You get to use... Uh, you can get to roll up, uh, re-roll up to three dice. Yeah, we'll actually yeah, do that. Because so okay. if I have uh, a mess of critical, that will actually mess up my response as far as I know. It shouldn't be the... Well... Up to you. Let's see it. Let's see it. Go for it. What'd okay, you get? Then, Depends on what you uh, got. Okay, let me do this. I'll just roll roll two. It's six successes. I can't see it, it, sir. It's oh private. crap. Shit. Sorry. It's okay. I will reveal it to everyone. Yeah. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not roll. bad. Okay. Well, it's a mess of grid. So, okay. Can I role play <laughs> the mess of grid? <laughs> just know you. Just know, know. Just know you. You, you know the area. It's not a good neighborhood of St. Louis. Okay. You, you, you more or less know, but you also kind of damage for. Uh, you also kind of damage poor Noel's map. No, no. no, no. <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can Go I? Can I give, 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 give me the information first. Like, give me what. what so I know okay. From my so you know, you know that it's in a it's in a bad neighborhood. You also know that it's abandoned. Um, it is in Old North St. Louis. But the parts of Old North St. Louis that are connecting around the area of like Bush Gardenish area, like it's in it's it's in the Apocalypse Now area of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, a good zone. Okay, is there any? Sorry for rolling that with that. Uh, is there anyone who I can be acutely aware or suspect to holding the area? You know, like being the boss around the vampire daddy of the it's region. it's a bit it's a bit of a no man's land it's a bit of like a feeding area for people it's not okay. quite a rack okay but it's definitely a no man's land okay so what i will do then and i'm rolling with the crit messy crit because that's funnier uh before noel can even react probably before you can react frank rarely shows that kind of a uh, speed he grabs the map from her hand almost like you know almost even uh, tearing it off from the hands of the noel his fellow nosferato dragging her almost from the chair or from a donut where she was sitting you're sending her to a fucking no man's land is that Something that should have been done, sending her alone? Hey, tough guy. She looks up to you. I'm nobody's mother. She asked me for an address, and I gave it to her. Did she look like someone who knows where she's going? She looks like somebody who had a GPS in Google. You know those things, right? Google. Those things. Where you find things out. You don't do these things like that or sending people like that. I thought better of you. Listen here. He asked me a request and I gave it to her. I don't know what else you want from me. Sounds like you disappointed daddy. She chuckle starts a little bit. Look, I can take you to the place. I don't know any more than that. I'm more than willing to go as a gesture in my part for my part in this blunder. I don't want anything bad to happen to your friend. I like you guys. Your friend here, even though she didn't want to go into business with me, she points at Letty. Seems like a decent person. You all seem like decent people. Some of you more than others. She looks at Entropy and Callisto. Why the fuck she say fuck me for? <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> now can we go? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, Letty's just gonna... Just give us the address. I don't want you to get caught up uh, cut off in anything 
Fine. 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 She says, whatever you want to do. And she hands you the address. Your beeper rings, Callisto, and it's a set of messages. I miss you. Where are you? What are you doing? I knew I'd find this number eventually. Don't ignore me. Where are you? I'm glad I, I will find you. I the floor and I break it with my foot. Or my <laughs> shoe, I guess. You guys hear the loud stomp and the crackle. I'm hoping I don't have okay. those issues either, right? Before we go. Frank still storms, storms off. He's kind of angry. Uh, but before we go, question. That's my map! Yeah, Fuck. with the map. And she, and she sits back down. <laughs> so, uh, before we go, question. Uh, she did drop something very vital. Uh, Her hand, some... yes. Oh, no. you meant you meant Noel. <laughs> Sorry. Hands are not vital. Hands are just handy. Clearly, you've never been without one. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do is a very simple thing. Uh, I want to go back to the separate room, if that's available, uh, to the small laptop, very low end, actually, and. Uh, check the GPS of Amanda's phone properly with the connection uh, and I'm if she does yeah she's <laughs> maybe you have but he doesn't know that but you want to you want to check her phone Amanda's phone what what, it, wait, what is it you're trying to do again I want I want to check the Amanda's location her last known location by GPS by the account that probably he has the password to <laughs> With well, you have a flip phone, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I said. Go to the computer that is probably somewhere here. So you storm off to the computer. The rest of yeah. you get prepared to leave on out. Lenny's gonna go and pick up the pieces of uh, the map, <laughs> the beeper, the, beeper. <laughs> the little LCD screen, the motherboard, the battery. She's like, I'm, I could probably use these later. <laughs> I'm you know, like... Callisto, that's the seventh beeper your followers get you. You should be a little bit more concerned with the source of their money, okay? No. I would like to um, go to bootleg Harley Quinn. What do you want? What's up? So, about the branding, I'm usually not into this, but, you know, seeing all you guys hard at work... Kind of makes me want to participate. She shakes her head and says, Speak to Letty. She told me that she's going to take all executive decisions. Oh, Hi. so what and the hell she do you do? Off. <laughs> Bitch. She turns around and her hair almost flutters. She goes, Listen here, Depresso Expresso. Look who's talking. I do the things. Letty thinks the things. Okay? Okay, and then she flutters back and goes back to work. Letty's just gonna, like, skip on by. Entropy, don't be a dick! Get your co-worker on a leash. But anyway, yeah, like I tried. We, we tried, but you kind of escaped, Entropy. I'm gonna catch up to Letty. How about Brandy? Have you thought of a name yet for these drinks? Nothing edgelord, nothing emo. <laughs> you have a black blood bag. What do you want to name it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You'll probably name it Callisto. I am not drinking Callisto every night. Sounds like you are, <laughs> says somebody who's working from far away. Can I look and, and see another one says, like Hell, I wouldn't <laughs> mind drinking Callisto every night, baby. If I may. Curse of letters. Touch of oblivion. 
That's too long. You hear somebody say gay? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I don't... I don't appreciate your workers. Just... I'm calling... Do we have HR yet? Oh, I am HR, right? HR, hi! <laughs> yeah, there are two HRs. <laughs> you know what? I I never should have... This is what I get for trying to pick up a hobby, and I'm gonna storm out. Amidst this conversation, Callisto, you see two guys, and they're wearing a shirt, and it has a, um... It has a candle on it with a prayer hand, right? You can tell that they've taken these, of course, from somebody else, but it says, it says, Harbingers of Light. And whereas you only saw posters before, now you're seeing shirts. No. Ugh, indeed. And one of them kind of looks at you like eerily familiar, like. Hmm. Hmm. Fuck it. And they continue to get back to work. You reach the nearest computer that's by the corner door and you type in the key, the password. It's wrong the first two or three times, and you don't know why. Then you type in the same fucking password again, the same way that you did the first two times, and it works. It's always fucking like that. Fucking computers. It's like the USB. You know, you plug, you plug, you plug, you plug. And then it finally works. It's like magic. You identify the location. And it is, it is in the no man's land that was referred to you it's north of you it's almost maybe about 20 minutes close to your haven as your haven is about as a bit further north and all the construction dumps left right outside of north st louis above the the bush stadium area in that sort of like ghetto gangster no man's land that nobody frequents anymore you know exactly what I'm talking about, too, don't you? Yeah, but, but I have another question here. Yeah. Uh, it's up to you if you will let it. But is there any way to set uh, the phone that currently is there, right, to the uh, listening mode? So there will no, be... No, unfortunately not. Recording? No, okay. unfortunately not. The last known location is there. Mm -hmm. And... I would assume, Letty, that you see this, right? And you're able to put a pin in the same said location. Yeah, for, for, for the sake of uh, purposes, he probably wouldn't go far. He will just be leaning over the laptop and like, <laughs> even like, you know, like that, that kind of a lead. You see all seven foot of him arched in what is his very own St. Louis arch, pulling down. <laughs> al almost Disney-like, you know, f sensation. If Disney was a very creepy, if weird, animated stuff yeah so you lean back down and you guys have a location and then another message is received to all your phones again and this time it's a foot you don't get one Callisto because well you know so, there's three beeps that go off at the same time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Why is he sending me this? No idea. What is it? Is it the left or the right one? <laughs> Good question. It's, it's the left one. And toes are missing, too. It's not a pleasant image. Is it just a close-up of the foot, or like can we see? You can area? see in the background 
Ah, there you go. You can see in the background that they're in a building. It doesn't look like the street. It looks like they're in a in a building itself. Are there any defining markings for this building? Like any kind of tags? You can see that it's run down. You can see that it's it's run down. It looks abandoned. It looks murky. It looks fucky disgusting. So, St. Louis. Yes. St. Louis. <laughs> New city we love. We know the place. You know the place. Anything else? You know the you area. Know? I mean, that's up to you guys. Is there anything before you take off? Uh, Letty's gonna call um our wonderful Baron. Oh. So you ring Malice up. Okay. I'm just going to send a real quick text back saying I D C with a stereotypical emo boy, just waving his hair back. <laughs> <laughs> and you get the upside down <laughs> smile back returned to you. <laughs> you know, the emoji with the upside down face smiling. Oh, uh, it's. It's when people send the actual textual emojis, so it makes them even creepier. The ones that I usually use. <laughs> oh, <laughs> got it. Or those. <laughs> That's fucking creepy. <clears throat> so, you call malice. It takes a while. It almost feels like it's going to go straight to voicemail. And he picks up and you hear lovely jazz in the background. And you hear, yo, what's up? Got a situation. What do you mean? What kind of situation? One of ours is missing. Like missing, missing or like like body parts showing up in pictures oh shit that's not good what do you need from me can you handle this or what's up you can handle it just letting you know obviously keep your Tell the ears area. to the ground in case Take anything you comes hear away. you hear a whistle you, you're around, right? You're staying nearby, so I probably hear the conversation. He'll just mm -hmm. pop, uh, like, you know, move his head a bit uh, up from the monitor, like, tell, tell the area. And he'll... He's gonna pat his little bald head. <laughs> Yo, listen. We have an issue. And you just hear a bit of like back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get over there if you can. Uh, where, where, what, what's, what's the location? Do you have an idea? Do you, do you, are you guys on the way? Are you there? Where are you calling from right now? Uh, UBW. I'm going to geotag you the location. You're going to geo what? Ah, uh, whatever. I got, I got somebody on it. Don't worry. If anything, you can't find us, ask Noel. Daria, come here. I have a job for you. You hear him speak to this bartender that you know so well. All right, keep me posted. I'll see somebody. I'll send somebody over there, maybe. Well, we'll see. Any clicks? Do you guys prepare to head on out? Are we all stocked up, all fooded up? Uh, yep, I'm good. I'm gonna head over to my bike, give it a little ring ring, and then a vroom vroom. So, actually a question to you, uh, Storyteller, disregard all the blood and stuff uh, you said of that kind, but is there any way to have something in the uh, package? Normal blood? For the safety? Yeah, just for the safety. Yeah. Yeah, there's there is a big bin that has 
in the in, in bold letters, nothing special. <laughs> By the corner entrance. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll take some for uh, again, very, very like sealed off files, temporary for safety measures. We need to be stopped. Yeah. Of course, it only makes sense. So, Miss Callisto, are you? You're not gonna take anything. No, I don't need it. Just the ten claws. Okay, wonderful. So, we know obviously that Letty doesn't ride share, typically selfish. But everybody else, I assume you all go together. Can I introduce the weirdest car they've ever seen in the area park nearby? Well, probably not the re rare uh, weirdest, but. Go it's ahead, weird, introduce yeah, your wiener dog van. Okay, it is. Uh, well, it is actually a van, more of a, uh, you know, that's decommissioned van with a bit of the uh, bad shape. I've been, I've bought this van for like a thousand bucks and fixed it. Kind of a way uh, with the, <laughs> it's definitely been repainted several times. Frank is not the one who bought it. Uh, and and uh, you see the pieces of uh, the heads of the van, like was something was took off, and there is the again uh, a small sign that usually before was the pest control, you know, like mm. the, uh, now it's being properly at least partially removed, but still some sort of stuff left there. Very unconspicuous, noticeable one. Let's pick if someone wants. So you guys are gonna ride the pest control mobile. <laughs> if there are, I don't care. But it's big enough to fit everyone. Gonna pat the back seat. I'm gonna walk away from that, and I'm gonna look at Callisto. <laughs> <laughs> Would you happen to have a ride, or do we have to go in that? I mean, how bad can it be? I make my way towards the weirdo pedal van. Letty's just surprising. Sad. <laughs> Nobody wants to ride with me. Okay, I'll see you there. Bye. <laughs> Surprisingly, inside it's decent. Like not the oh, I kind of don't have anything. It's smooth. It works. It doesn't actually like you know chokes and tries to die the moment it starts. Someone tampered with that, and someone was doing a lot of care. There's leather seats inside, even though they're a little bit old. But you know, Callisto, for you, who's used to driving, who's used to being driven by your followers in nicer cars, it's a bit of a downgrade. But you know, you'll live. You're more used to rideshare services. Mr. Entropy, though, how you get around by spending so much in ride shares, we don't know. So, we ride through what is the nights of the streets of St. Louis. The roar of Letty's bike can be heard from outside of the refurbished van. It has a bit of that old people smell while you're in there. But hey, at least it's a pair of wheels and it's almost yours. It's Frank's, of course. As you're making way, you see the scenery of St. Louis, which to not much of its credit is a lot of industrial wear and tear. The night brings out the baser elements of the city, and while to you it's not really a threat, you could see, you could see how humans are not very encouraged to reside in this city. 
it is, of course, with much caution that one has to delve into these areas. That being said, you go from the up-and-coming neighborhood of Sulard, where Urban Brew Works is located, to the more hellscape-like environment above Bush Stadium and just outside of Old North St. Louis. And it is, to say the least, a no-man's land. You go from jazz clubs and oyster bars and upcoming lofts to worn down streets and rank neighborhoods, signs that are thrown off and people who seem to be accosting each other for the last bits of property that they own to their name. And it isn't, it isn't that difficult to see the Camarilla's influence in St. Louis over the last 20 years. Instead of uplifting and building, they have bled it dry to the ground. No doubt the influence of the prince and his retinue. Malice has, of course, spoken about bringing this back and trying to restore the glory of St. Louis, but when faced with this, can you really believe the promise? You don't take long to get to the unfortunate area last seen by last seen by Amanda's location and it's to say the least very run down if any kindred live here they absolutely have to be hiding from something or someone because good god who would live in a shithole like this the gps location ends shortly on your phone buddy as your bike comes to a rearing halt you are stopped at an intersection and you can see from behind you the st louis arch and the big flats of the city that lay in your rear the better parts of town, the more industrial parts of town. Around you are shuttered businesses, apartments, flats, places that maybe once had life, maybe once offered promise, maybe once offered the show of a better day. But now, that's all said and done. All gone. The van cranks down as it stops. And you hear a window creak slowly by hand. <coughs> And a man who looks like as if by magic is fitting into the car. Pokes his head out at you. So, this is the place, right? Looks like it. Hmm. Now it's about finding. And asking questions. Not really good, is it? Maybe you are. All of you, I mean. Not just you. Crazy when your detective gets kidnapped and you have to find yeah. a detective. Yeah, detect, detect the detective. Not too far from you guys, you see. So, as you look around, all you can see are a couple of vagrants. They are disheveled, and they are 
not yelling, but they're not exactly talking either, and they're passing a bottle of hooch to each other. And they're laughing, and they're joking, and they're slapping their knees as they laugh, and there's one of them is sitting on a, on a milk box, on a milk carton box, and the other one is sitting on a piece of cardboard. I'll leave the car, uh, get a car to the place that taking a living car here is a very questionable decision. <laughs> Helpfully, the car looks like shit. Maybe whoever picks it up will consider this a part of, well, the whatever there is. <sighs> Still, he'll leave the car. Get out of the. You get out of the car. Yeah. And yeah, look around. Mostly, actually, look around for the areas where you can drag someone. So you want to roll for that, or you're just doing a, a cursory look? A cursory look. I'm not like I know what Manda was telling, but. Like, you know, it's one thing, do the ch uh, look there, but um, it's the other thing to know how. So he's more of a trying to look for it. But yeah, I can actually do the role. That's what do allowed. you what do what do our dear passengers do? Do they step out of the car yeah. or they, do they remain in the car? I'm going to step out and head towards said vagrants. The vagrants are passing bottle of alcohol to each other when they look at you and they say, oh, fuck. Look at his face! Look at his face! Look at his face! I'm gonna activate Shadow Cloak as I start walking up faster. Shadow Cloak is free. Of course. God, what did they do to deserve this on this <laughs> night? So, you summon the shadow, and in this darkness, they definitely lend themselves to you. The light here is a little less, it's a little more, it's, the, the darkness is a little stronger, there is little in the way of electricity, there is little in the way of actual lighting, there is little in the way of civilization out here, and maybe some people prefer it that way. And the shadows lend to themselves, and behind you, it appears as if they begin to develop around you and give you this almost draculian cape with tentacles that splay out around the sides real slowly and piercing. And one of them rubs their eyes really quick and grabs the other one. He goes, yo, did you see that? And he's passing. He's like, I didn't see shit. And he slaps the hooch back on him. Take a little bit of this, bitch. You're acting crazy again. And he kind of like contemplates a sip of the hooch. And he continues to look at you as you get close. You all, of course, see this. You see the shadows play around behind Entropy and take form around him. And he walks up to them. You all, like I said, you all see this. And knowing Entropy's track record, this might not end well. I'm concerned there on, on the other thing. Uh, to reverse engineer the role. Uh, Amanda was telling how to find, like, investigate a location. Uh, is there any way to interpret that from the predatory side of thinking how he would have done it properly? He knows how to hide. He knows how to approach the victim that's in his blood. That's yeah, how much do you have an insight? So not an insight. I was thinking about either stealth or actually streetwise. I'll allow streetwise. Streetwise and intelligence. Okay. 
What do you do, Callisto? I fetch entropy. Make sure nothing gets out of it. Not me. again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't like this. You see him walking and a giant, giant piece of woman is walking behind you. And suddenly their eyes go from you to the bouncing voluptuousness that is Callisto. And you hear a dog whistle. Letty, are you looking? Are you looking with Frank? Yes. Gotcha. The, the one sitting on the the one sitting on the bucket says, "Can I help you?" <laughs> I don't suppose you've seen a a woman around here around blase blah blase. You know, I describe her because I don't fucking know. But <laughs> I'm looking at a woman right now. That's a whole lot of woman, baby. Can I roll I him in the chest? Jesus. Like Leonidas straight the out of him. <laughs> Are you wearing heels? Yes. You kick. Uh, hmm. Give me a strength and brawl roll just for the funsies. <laughs> Jesus. You kick him in the chest with your heels. And he goes flying against the light pole and plops down. He asked you a question. You'd be wise to answer it. The guy that was kicked doesn't respond. And with a hand on his hooch trembling, he puts the hooch down and he goes and he looks at his friend. And his friend is non-responsive. I look over to Entropy. You know, you do what you want with these. There is a smudge of blood on the light pole. And at six successes, Callisto, you have probably killed him. Oops. When I do this, you guys get all... I didn't mean to kick him so hard. I was trying to help you. Also, Noah's to look around. It's much appreciated anyway. So I'm going to look down towards this man, shadow still dancing around me and all. So, as I was saying, girl, oh. detective stereotype, mask, where? You, just one second, Callisto, you gain two stains for killing a poor homeless guy. Uh, is that humanity? Yeah, you click on humanity. Okay. It's just to list them, you click on your humanity. Oh, okay. Yeah, just click one and two. Don't double click though. What's up? Uh, question. Is there any convictions that help her to mitigate that action? Not yet. No, no, no. It's usually done the moment you Yeah, no, in. she she doesn't have any I was that's the first thing I looked at. She doesn't have anything. <clears throat> so Yeah. We'll discuss this at the end. Just to see. Just to see. We'll discuss this at the end. Um, so the other guy is now clearly shitting himself and he's gripping his hooch and he takes a long, hard swig from his bottle. As he does this, of course, you have three successes in the possible bisha failure. Possible bisha failures don't matter so long as you get a success, right? So you gain three successes and you're looking around. And you're looking around and the, the first obvious place would obviously be somewhere that's shuttered it would be somewhere that has a lot of easily easily hideable things and as you look and you look and you guys are looking together you 
not in the far off distance you see a strange liquid on the floor maybe a couple paces away and it's at the same time where the guy goes yeah 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 yes yes there was a girl here she was she, she had a weird mask on and she's she, she smoking smoking a cigarette I smelled like shit it was probably a new porch or something Sounds I don't know right. where over there by the store she walked to the she was walking to the flats and we saw this guy follow up on her we offered him a little bit of hooch he gave us five dollars he was, he was really nice he's a tall guy this is blonde dirty blonde brown blonde blondish he had a beard. He looked like he could be a model. I don't know. I looked like that when I was younger, but I mean, look at me now. Yeah, look at you now. Know anything Shut else? Shut up. At all? You, f you got five dollars? I pass him five dollars. And he looks at it and he smells the bill and he goes, mm, yeah, it smells right. Yeah, I think I think he was helping her, looking after her, looking for her. I I, I don't fucking know. Just leave me alone. And he takes a swig of the hooch. See, I look over to the bloody pole. Then the Callisto. Streets are full of walking trash with no ambition, and I'm gonna activate Touch of Oblivion, and I'm gonna choke him and raise him up and just watch the life dissipate from him he struggles and he tries to smash the bottle of hooch on your forehead in his in the ensuing struggle he of course manages to throw it at you and your <laughs> crashes on you and the the rancid liquor splashes all over your body And he's immortal. You're not. Roll for your touch of oblivion. Jesus. In in very little time, the life drains away from him as the 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 umbras bread and butter surrounds your hand and you choke him slowly to death and once there is no more struggling the limp lifeless body struggled against your hand I let go and with a resounding thud he falls into the floor no witnesses right and I'm going to make my way towards where he pointed or described. You, Entropy. I'm sure I don't even have to tell you. You take three blood stains. I mean, yeah, three blood stains. Three, accident. <laughs> three, three, um, three stains. Don't forget your five dollars. Yeah, lo load the body. No. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely dropped some loot, so... Fingerprints. Don't leave anything behind. Uh, I don't care that much. So... Yikes. Hold on. We need whatever. Solus. I mean, we need whatever. Like for for the kill, we need whatever. <laughs> Has to be. This just is violated be the not, what you just violated the tenants. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Innocent. I mean, he was. 
he was an innocent. No. In any case, Fair you enough. two walk away from the murder, and it happens to escape your eyes as he doesn't talk much because his larynx is being crushed. And you see the puddle of blood. And you see there's even a lock of hair. And upon further inspection, it does look like Amanda's hair. It looks like a strip of it was pulled off. So I assume we are the same place together or we went to the other. Yeah, location. you and you and Letty are looking at the same place together. You guys are walking together. And there is a light trail of blood leading down into a set of apartments and flats in the middle of the road. <sighs> of course. So, have you talked with these two? I assume we are a bit away, so we don't see. Yeah, you just... are a bit away. And you guys can see this, that they're both Not standing over being... something and looking down. Now, for, for the purposes of not making a scene. So, if you approach, so, you learn something from these people? I'm talking to you two. Murderer oh. number one, murderer number two. I don't know, they're, they're murderers. There's a lack of etiquette on his part. Mine was an accident. Yeah, mm. sure. Don't know your own strength. Apparently. Get me. You see them you see them talking to each other as they arrive to you guys. Yeah. Anything useful? Yes. And I point towards the way where uh innocent number two told me to go. You had a life, you know. <laughs> Not a very good one. I did him a favor. Maybe he was a movie star. Well. <laughs> any in any case, he had pointed towards the general direction where the blood trail is sort of leading. I mean, you know, he was kind of wish-washy with his hand directions. That's what kind of have what happens when you're a perpetual chronic drunk. But in the general direction of. Yeah, you know, Frank will just pick up. You're used to following patterns, Letty. So, if you can give me either wits or insight or maybe even intelligence and mm, let's see. Do you have any specialties that can help you with this? Hematology even. Maybe. Maybe. So you can do science with your plus one and wits or intelligence. Maybe see how long how long the blood's been there. Oh, and we're apparently looking for a blonde, correct? Right. I don't know. Did you listen? <laughs> Kinda. I was too caught up in the bloodlust. So that. Two D ten. Oh, you rerolled the willpower? No, um, that's my plus one. And so then... you can do that directly. Oh. So you can click on your specialty and then do intelligence. Yeah. Awesome. And then it'll yeah. give you everything together. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's why I thought that you rolled the willpower. I kind of wanted to show you that you can do the... Okay. Can we take okay. the first roll? <laughs> yeah, you could take the first roll if you'd like. Yeah. I'll allow it. Do you want to willpower your first roll? Just in case? We do offer it. Mm, yeah. Just right click it and delete the and willpower the ones you'd like to read. Okay, you get a four roll. You get on your knees. You pop a squat. Rather. Personally sounded a little. And you kind of put your fingers on the blotch of the blood and you look at it and you can tell through your experience with various wounds 
This has been here about an hour or two, maybe even three. It's been here very early on into the night. Chances are Amanda got snatched the moment she got here. Um, I want to look at the text messages and see uh, around what time the pictures were sent to us. Yeah. Just going to ask the same question. So it's 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 about 1 30, almost 2 a.m. for you guys. And you got these pictures, I'd say, at around 10 to 11. You know, it'd been a minute between getting to your haven, getting to UBW, figuring out the blood, figuring out everything else. All right. However, do remember that pictures can be sent after a certain time, of course. You just receive them at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, with that knowledge of the pictures and my blood, can I make the assumption because based off of the time and when the blood, the coagulation of the blood, if it was roughly the same time? In the ballpark area, maybe, maybe. The Remember, kindred blood is a little different mm -hmm. than, than human blood, as it were. What's that, Frank? No, I said the best assumption we have. Yeah, I would agree. That is the best assumption to be had. Um, another thing. The blood splatter. I want to tell if it's thick, like it was an injury that happened here and then it trailed in. Or if this was something like they carried her in and she was already bleeding. So if it would trail out and then back in. Forensics um, galore. <laughs> it feels... It, it's like a small splotch. Probably like... You want to say it's a combat wound, but there's no signs of rough housing around the blood. Okay. Looks like an ambush then. Well, sneak attack. <laughs> yeah, it would seem so. Not too far off from you is just a small splash again. Another splotch of blood. Towards the building? Yes, towards the building. So, a trap. seems so don't believe anyone can be that stupid not to make it a trap well we did just walk into one like a month ago so yeah well I guess we need to check it any suggestions he'll actually look at you uh, entropy that like more better just walk in. I mean, if you're offering and I walk in. If he dies, I am not responsible. <laughs> That's on him. Uh, tell me, how tall are there like a walls or anything? The building does it even look uh, moderately uh, lift by the. As you look forward, all the way down, you see that there is only only one building with power, and ominously so, and it has a red emergency exit light. Far in the distance. Well, it's not too far. It's walkable. It's maybe a few hundred meters away from where you are. Going into the flats. And it looks like your typical northern flats. It has the escape. It has the, the little balconies with the escape ladders that let you gun down in case something bad is happening or something is happening of any kind of sort. Okay. Uh... So, and for pictures I see, there there's like multiple floors to the flats, right? Yes, it is a 
multi-floor flat. I doubt that whoever leaves there will be on the first floor if there is any danger. So, mm, it's too dark here, so I'll definitely, we'll, we'll def if we start approaching when we shall see if there is a chance, like the windows that are not glassed or like not blocked from okay. entrance on the top floor. I don't care about it first. So you go all the way towards the light and your, your intent is to go up to the third floor, to the top floor. Oh, I'm not going right now. I just want to see if there are windows facing the building or something uh, that uh, are not closed. If, for example, someone might consider climbing there. They're all busted up in one way or another. Some of them have the tape of the X's, you know, that you usually do mm -hmm. in a natural disaster. You can't oh. really explain why they have them here, but they are more or less damaged. Well, I guess inside we shall notice the traces of fire. This is why they were busted out. Yeah. Insurance. Baby. There's there is damage, there is muck, there is guck, and as you get closer, the door is blown out. Like the door is left hanging by the seam almost. Almost cinematically in a weird way. The trail of blood continues, though it, it does get lighter as you get closer. And at the door, there is a giant splotch of blood. And this is a bit more fresh. And there's two different pools of blood at the door. Uh, should I? Yeah, I definitely shouldn't say that. But let's focus on others because uh, when we will get a bit closer to the building, I'll try to hide. I'm going to tell everybody to silence their phones if they have one. Or turn them off. Or stomp yeah. on them on the floor. Or stomp them on the floor, whatever. GPS, baby, yeah. <laughs> Don't so, make noise. Obvious rouse check for unseen passage. Okay. To be hidden. Will anybody make any preparation rules? Are you um, gonna get anything ready before we I go want in? Silence of death and weight of the feather. Oh my god. You sure you're not Banu Hakim? <laughs> Sounds like it. So it is free. Mm -hmm. And let's see here. You become as light as death. Callisto, are you preparing anything? Um, I activate lethal body. Oof. I am going to activate shadow cloak once more, but this time not to intimidate poor innocence. Mmm. More on the stealthy side this time. Okay. So you come to the threshold. And the inside is ran down. Still can't get over that. The inside, of course, is ran down. And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this in three rolls. So I'll allow a champion of the roll and everybody can help them search. You can add a die. Okay? We're gonna do this our own way. So, we're gonna go choose whoever has the best wits and either awareness, stealth, or insight. Well, for wits and stealth, I will probably have five. I've got five as well. You'll have more. For wits and awareness, I'll have five. All of us are very witty and stealthy, but just saying, Entropy will have more because of his disciplines. 
Yeah. What do you have, my dear Callisto? Um, I have two in insight, two in awareness, and two in wit. And nothing in um in stealth. You're not a very stealthy woman, are you? Difficult okay. To be that stealthy when you're that imposing. So. In a good way. This is very true. Attraction comes with its downsides. So. I'm assuming the champion of the role will be Entropy. Wait, oh. no, because um, my Shadow Clug adds two to my stealth, but I have five, and with wits and awareness, my stealth is at zero. So a uh, Shadow Clug would only add two. So I don't think it should be me if we're going the stealthy or approach. Oh. So, no. champion Stop. of the role, ladies and gentlemen, please select your champion. No, it's going to be between Frank and I. Yeah, I can roll if anyone helps. I can, okay. I can die. It's up to you guys. Mm -hmm. Whoever's the champion of the role will be the first one in the room. The first one leading the, the charge. Yeah, and uh, I do Oh yeah, hell have... no, I'm not going in first. <laughs> I go first. So, <laughs> let's talk about going first. Obviously, the general rule of thumb is the stealthy person does a bit of investigation. So, question. Will uh, my actual obfuscate affect my role in, in any manner? Not in searching, unfortunately, for you. Hmm. Well, if you want somebody beefy to go first, Callisto did offer. Yeah, wait, searching uh, the building for the... Can I just fucking use a larceny? Yeah, I don't see why not. You can. You're not breaking in, but you can use it to search. Yeah. Okay. We'll say that you go right behind him, Callisto. Imagine a so, woman fighting your battles for you. So, okay, larceny Hot. and... <laughs> uh-huh. And what ability? And intelligence. Yes. Intelligence. Intelligence. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'll rouse the blood. Fuck it. Just why not? Does anyone helping with that? Yeah, you get you get a die per. Because everybody... An extra set of eyes... Looking mm -hmm. behind you and around you. So, per each person, it will be five, I guess. Yeah. How do I heal my health? You do I that, uh... Have... Did you not, um, take away from your feeding, from the one bag? You take away one dot no. from the one bag. Yeah, take away one dot from the one bag. Six successes. Six successes. So you pass the first test. So you guys enter in. It's... <laughs> you guys ever seen the Acme shows? Where it's like the group of people and they're all going together like this, walking in. That is how you file into... Well, a bit more, of course. Stealthy and aware. You file in real slow. Frank being the tallest. His head almost hits a couple of things as he's making his way in. It feels almost like the AT&T bar commercial with Callisto being the second tallest making her way in. And then I would imagine the rear guard would be held by Letty or who would be the last to go in? Letty scary ass. <laughs> I mean, the, the rear guard should be someone who will be able to fight off whoever snakes upon us. Just saying. Let us too scared. She's going last. I'm just gonna <laughs> turn so entropy's behind. Tie yourself to the entropy and like <laughs> as if you're being turned. <laughs> <laughs> and you make your way in, and it it smells awful. It smells rancid. There is. It smells like driftwood. It's lived in. It's got mold, mildew. It is disgusting. And you look around and you can tell that obviously it's trashed in. And nobody's really been in here. And the blood splotches become much more difficult to see at night. 
in rather in this darkness and you have to get real close but you notice that they're leading up and you make your way across all the debris across all the trash up until the set of stairs that feel like at any time and any turn they could break now roll again for the second roll mm, me again same one same roll you just did okay you don't have to rouse the blood obviously because you've already gained the benefit for it oh okay <laughs> it's one of those days <laughs> you know what no would you like to succeed would you oh are you gonna willpower uh no i was going to say you know what fuck it would you There's... like to succeed at a cost you, did you succeed at a cost <laughs> yeah which is that you were not unfortunately as quiet as you would like you step on this you you your foot on the on the stairs is a little heavy and it creaks just a little bit what's up with that face <laughs> I was going to say, uh, no, I mean, that's fine. Uh, I will lose Opuscade then if that's also yeah. part of the yeah, plan. Yeah. But you, I you, you do have uh -huh. to of death. Oh, but did you activate it? Uh, okay, I, I will tell it next time, but when you go Opuscade, I thought that you just stopped. Uh, gotcha, I gotcha. It, uh, you, you, you succeed at a cost. Well, remember, your foot is silent. Yeah. But the things You're that normal, react yeah. around you are not. This so air just like yeah it creaks and it creaks hard it's probably and like, yeah. are you are you grabbing something to like walk up or are you walking up without touching anything uh if i can uh play it a bit into this area then it's not even the uh stairs is screeching it's the stairs actually rotted enough so it's like barges yeah it's and shaking yeah and you pull and it just if the alarm bell hadn't been rung before it's rung now but you make it to the second and then third floor and this is where the blood stops mm -hmm. give me the final die roll uh the same or we change the roll the same roll it's fine okay. unless you would like to change to a different roll for this i'll allow it it's my biggest die pool so Better. Through the skin of your body. I mean, through the skin of your teeth. It's always the big dice pool. It's always the big dice pool. I know. You guys make it to the top. And the smell of blood is thick. you're in the middle of the flats so there's a set of doors four doors two of them have been blown open they look unused they look untouched the one by the far end is the only one that's closed properly closed at that I'll get the gun out of the holster. Not the sawed off shotgun, but actually the gun. Like, not your homebrew shotgun, right? Yeah, not a homebrew shotgun. Here I'm getting the proper German engineering, the good kind of a weapon. The, 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 the main hall itself leading to the door feels dark and desolate it feels run down there's layers of dust and neglect and the mixture of mold and decay is stuffier here than anywhere else every step that frank takes begins to creak with the groan of like disrepair and decay and 
the air around you suddenly just feels heavier. As you get to the door, there is an upside down smile carved on it, onto the wood. A nod to somebody, maybe. I uh, Man, take out my phone and show the text message with the dumbass text message I sent before that too. I think Man, we got we the right inside. place. And I'm gonna turn to Frank. Don't freak out. If we go inside and something is really bad. Or please do. I mean, you seem pretty pent up. I sincerely hope that you were just saying that and you don't really know what's inside. That's so if I knew. Let's get inside. She's just gonna kinda shake her head like she she's pissed that he would even assume that she knew something. Do you I go in first? Question. Or do you let Callisto go in first? Do you want me to go first? Well, there were works better. I'm not a fighter. You're a lot. I pat him on the shoulder and I go first. How do you enter Callisto? Is it an Urban Brew Works 2.0 where you punch the door? Unsuccessfully, <laughs> or is it a light open and you trap? Uh, I check the doorknob first. Is it even unlocked? <laughs> Smart move. <laughs> the first time in Black Magic history that somebody checks a doorknob. <laughs> I was waiting for knocking. <clears throat> you try the knob, and as you turn it comes off, but the door creaks open. You throw it back and there's a clattering clunk sound in the back. And as the door opens, there's a flickering light bulb overhead that is on its last dying breath. And it only lends to the eeriness of the environment. But the 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 smell of decay is pungent and interwoven in this little scent of death and misery is kindred by Tay. You enter and the the flat itself is to say lived in is a stretch but it's definitely in a slightly better in a slightly better state than the rest of the environment somebody has been using this in what way you don't know the wallpaper is peeling the floor is cracked the tiles are popping out and there is a slight dripping sound from somewhere, like water, like some tap has been left open ever so slightly. And you make your way in. And as you get to the center, you see what feels like a, a shelf. And there is obvious tracks on the floor of this being moved and pushed around into one same back and forth location. I move it. For a second there, I felt, oh, I punch it and I break it. No. You, <laughs> I just Come rip on. it off. Like, grab your hand and you force it. And it is heavier than it seems, but you are undoubtedly a strong woman. Stronger than most kindred. 
by any of your Vitae standards. It screeches, it cries out, and it rubs against the already rotting floor. And it almost threatens to break as you finally get it out of the way. And you see a door with one of those little latches to see inside. And a small little chain to tug on it that doesn't go against the shelf. And from here, the smell of pungence is the worst. Do you open the door first? I'll open it first. You are the first to be greeted by the room. It is a room with a single light far end. There is a bed with rags and there is another light just above the bed. And on the floor, even for you, is some of the most gruesome stuff you have ever seen. It is Amanda. And she's on the floor. Well, all of her is on the floor. Her lifeless body has been dismembered and meticulously posed. It's the centerpiece of some sort of hellish macabre shrine and it the limbs are positioned as if in a dance of the grotesque of sorts and there are little flickering candles that cast shadows above each of her body parts almost it's a tapestry of the most disgusting and the most brutal that you have ever seen And around her body are sigils and circles drawn with what can only be her blood. And in the center is a nightshade flower. Right, it's pinned right on her heart. And all around this are the pictures proverbially what you must imagine are all of his previous victims <clears throat> looking into the body like looking into the act and the pictures are of people in what can only be described as their last moments they look uh, they look in anguish some of them don't even have eyes others have their mouth stitched and it's all as if they're spectating this gruesome scene I assume Amanda is like no more as their kindred, right? Not no. Mm. And at the center, you see ash. Mm. Right below the chest, there is ash all around that centerpiece. Um, I, I walk to back to the party, and I. Yeah, and go ahead, I tell her. them that she's dead. She's the first one to see this, of course, as she's opening the door. And you all follow suit. And this is what you see. I'd like to approach, actually, and pick up the flower. You... Grab the flower, and it makes a icking sound against the thud of the heart. You know Kindred turned to ash. But these are undoubtedly some of her parts. Okay. Okay. 
I guess we took our time. It could have already happened before we got here. Way before that. Is there any sources of like fire or anything? You know, the candles or anything? Only the candles. Only the candles on the floor. Good. 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 Candles are lit or not? Yes. They're the little tiny candles that you have. Somebody expected you guys to be here soon. Somebody wanted you to run into this in this fashion. Will you leave me? For a moment. Well, not for a moment. Surely. For some time. Letty is going to take a picture of the scene and she's going to send it to Malice. You get a text message back that says, Holy shit. What the fuck? I'm going to do the same, but send it to my people to see if they know anything of the spiritual, miracle, magical, blah, 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 that Entropy is not usually into. The response you get, Entropy, is interesting handiwork. Indeed. Know anything? The sigils, mind you. You get a text message that says... That dot 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 is the Nightshade Ripper dot dot dot. Have you not seen the news? We've got to stop dot, giving mark. these serial killers such badass names. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Makes you want to become one. I have a question for you, Frank. Do you cry? Yeah, sure. You there cry? Is, uh, there's like a. Uh, you there, guys the face see the... doesn't change a lot, but there's like this trace of uh, blood. You guys see the single thug tear that becomes multiple tears and streams of blood on Frank's face. And it overtakes his face, but he cries solemnly. And again, please, if you had everything you needed, can you leave? Sure. Good news is we have somewhat of a lead on who it was, but you take I your time. I will talk about good news later. We can discuss this outside. Yeah, I walk out after I say that. Get away from here as far as possible, please. And point of order, storyteller, you did say that this building is old. It's fucked up. It's condemned I, by all means. I want to bury her under the whole building. As good a burial as I've ever seen. But you prepared to burn the building down. Yeah. The three of you step on out. Right? So you step out to the main section of the flat and you hear, oh, shit. And somebody meets your gaze, whichever one of you is the first, and begins to book it outside and down the steps. I'm chasing them. Is there I a window in the room? Too. Huh? Is there a window in the room? Yeah, there's windows by the far end. They have the tape on them, you know, which I mean, it's not going to stop you if needs to stop you yeah no she's gonna go straight through the tape and go downstairs if, if you jump off the window hmm? i got weight of the feather do you follow callisto yes i'll follow that to make callisto sure callisto in heels you could catch up <laughs> imagine you give me a dex and athletics entropy you 
take off and your boots are pattering and their boots are pattering and you Callisto hear the glass break as Letty jumps out of the window and you head on down as quick as your heels will allow but though I don't care, think that you care about your heels by this point and you are just booking it in your best model run that you can do the person in front of you doesn't care for being stealthy and they are running fast and the, the stairs are creaking and they're moving and they jump across to try to cut against the stairs and get a head start even faster away from you and you all make it to the bottom floor Letty of course lands much faster than both of you and she the I'm assuming you're headed towards the door Letty to block the entrance mm -hmm. you block the entrance Letty as both of these two magnificent he Hecata make it all the way down and without a moment's hesitation you are barrel tackled as you both hit the ground you have weight of the feather so you hit the ground kind of hard because you don't weigh anything <laughs> But the person loses their balance, obviously. And it leaves both of you on the floor. As soon as we land, I'm going to immediately grab him by the face and I'm going to activate Eyes of the Serpent. So, that's kinky, first and foremost. <laughs> you can cut that part, Solis. No. The people need to know and learn what you are. <laughs> <laughs> the world must... No. Standing over both of you is Callisto in all of her seven footness and entropy. And as you grab this person's face and you use, you can go ahead and. Does it cost? I believe it does cost, it's free. right? It's, it's free? free? Okay, it's free. Wonderful. You push her, you push the, the, the hood over. Um, second, so I can show you. And what you see is not so much a him, but a her. And it is this beautiful blonde haired woman. Let me display for you guys. Uh, one second it's this she's got tattoos on her and she's got a braid and she has a, a chain necklace with a cross on it and she looks at you Callisto with a sense of dread before her eyes are taken by the eyes of the serpent wasn't I don't think it wasn't so much that she looked at you she felt you she recoiled from your presence you hold her still And, of course, for a visual, this is what you see. You hold her still, and she can't move. Get off me. Not until you tell us why you were here. She looks at you with regrettable contempt in her face. I was looking for him. It's very descriptive, but who is him? 
Who else do you think? You freak. She's just going to kind of grip a little harder on her jaw, kind of digging her nails into her. She bleeds ever so slightly. It's looking for a nightshade ripper. I'm going to pull out my phone and cover up the contact name. Uh, show the text I received from my people. So, I think we were looking for the same person, apparently. But, uh, so why did you run when you saw us? I mean, I don't look like him, do I? Or, what was the issue? You can't hope to be so fucking handsome. <laughs> Get off me! She screams to you. grab her arm and just kind of slide her hand up and take her finger and just snap it. She screams in pain. Play nice and or I won't rip off a finger. We can regrow them. Pretty sure you can't. She Closes her eyes and. Oh, wait, you keep her eyes, right? Yeah, okay. So she takes a deep breath and she utters a prayer very slowly. The first one to understand what's happening is you, Callisto. Let's just say religious icons don't sit very well with you. Because you're a beacon of profanity. And with deep breath, she prays out loud. And you feel a pressure begin to emanate against you. Letty. It's a pressure that feels like it's forcing you back. Very slowly. It's a shield almost that's beginning to make pressure between you and them. And she prays louder and the pressure becomes harder until you're forced to step back away from her. Almost as if you're being repelled. How far it, back from her? Four or five steps. Not very far, but it's enough to give her pause. Can someone shoot this bitch? It pushes all three of you off. And she takes a deep breath as if being freed from some kind of trance. Listen, you assholes. That's my brother who did that to your friend, I assume. Just like he did it to our mother. So you think your brother is handsome? Interesting. Oh. I hope you die slow, you piece of shit. I'm gonna He's activate. Dead. I'm gonna activate Touch of Oblivion, not to use it against her, but you know, just to show her. She looks like she's reaching for something. And I'm gonna pull she... my gun out and just point it at her. Uh uh uh. Fine, she says with a broken finger hanging down. <laughs> we can talk. Yeah, no prayer talk though. Just not here. I'm assuming your tall friend is still in that building. And he won't be leaving anytime soon. Well, I suggest he gets out of there ASAP because I put charges in there. Oh, fuck it. Whatever. And she nonchalantly grabs for her thing and she throws it at one of you. And it's a little detonator with a little clock on it. Whenever he's done mourning his dead, he can come and talk about ours. She 
gets up and screams with a passion once she uses her her hand to get up. Fuck. Be thankful I didn't do that to your ankle. You should be thankful I didn't set fire to the building with you inside of it. Like or are you resistant to fire? You want to go inside? I am more than willing to test it out. He smiles at you without a rebuttal. Go into my car. Let me know when you're done being animals. And you can tell she didn't take the tackle very well. And she's limping slightly. She walks away with her finger in her hand. And keep that one away from me. And she points with a broken finger at Callisto. I feel the disgust coming from you. Can I walk up to her when she turns her back? And then I kiss her in the lips. Jesus! I don't see why not. She's limping. Then I'll shove her off. I'll let kiss her and I'll shove her. He falls on the floor again. <laughs> and she stands up and she says, That's it! And she throws, she reaches in her pocket and she throws what feels like, what looks like is money at you. They're old bills. And most of them don't hit you. But three or four of them land on your chest and they burn you. As soon as she tosses it, I'm immediately shooting her in the leg. Immediately. Just one, like one shot right at the knee. Jesus, this is abuse. I told her not to do anything. She got sexually harassed, bro. It's a kiss. <laughs> From wow. a hot woman, it's okay. I don't like no. gays. I'm gonna make that bitch gay. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not you okay. Take, you take one aggravated point of health, Callisto. Unfortunately, right on the titty, um, right on the breast, and it's a bird mark, and it's a little disgusting. Uh. She screams out loud, a whale. What the fuck is your problem? She's gonna lift the gun up and aim it like right between her eyes. Next time you try some stupid shit, I'm putting one between your eyes. Better than being mouth fondled by a fucking demon. And she like hurls when she looks at you when you when you do that, Callisto. Oh, sin is so lovely, isn't it? Get me to my fucking car. I have first aid. <laughs> and she's holding the blood down on the wound, and the wound is going quite strongly. I've seen enough of this, so you know what? I'm gonna pick her up and lead her towards her car, uncharacteristically. Like a princess? A princess carry her? Over the shoulder like a potato sack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over the shoulder. She fucking sighs in defeat. Can you at least hold the wound? He says to you. And she is getting blood all over your chest. I lick it. It's got st rancid fucking liquor and blood all over it. <laughs> <laughs> but sure, after I lick it, I uh, hold down the wound and sigh and keep walking. What you taste in that lick is anger. It's pure hatred. She despises all of you. With a passion. As we pan back to Frank. What are you doing in these moments, Frank? So he will actually very carefully collect the photos on the floor. And... Uh, like in a solemn, quiet manner, set up the candles on the uh, places where they can light something up. Uh, let's just say 
if he probably was while he was walking upstairs while he was walking up uh, he might have picked up a few places in a building like the walls uh, what's the proper term for the walls the holding walls uh, the you don't build the buildings like that. The, uh, the essential walls that you built for the building to hold when you build it are uh, higher. You mean the pillars? Mm, maybe the pillars or the... Uh, the foundation. The, foundational walls. Maybe foundational wall, walls will be the proper term, yes. So, for the sake of making this proper, will you let me... Uh, should I make a multiple rolls or will you let me make you, one roll? Do, do one big roll. Do one big roll. Okay. Perfect. So what will happen next? He will smudge for whatever it takes. He will actually cut his hand and add a big trace of blood on the wall that after a few moments will start to sizzle as if it was a fucking acid gnawing deep into the wall, into the concrete, or whatever you use instead of concrete in this country. <laughs> we use concrete and plywood, Doug. Yeah, plywood, probably, yeah. So, um... Uh, and sheetrock. Yeah. It will not break in a moment, but given the time, it probably will start clump crumbling under its weight, under the constructional damage when he's out and a bit away from the building. And the fire will catch up. So he will be walking quietly, slowly, holding whatever he could have picked from this scene of crime. Uh, taking the photos and the flower. I don't think Amanda had something of some kind of a memento on her, so he'll just carry that. Oh, no. A pack of cigarettes. Mm. Mm. And yep, he'll walk outside to see the old insanity happening. No, what you're seeing is the two ladies following Entropy as he carries a third woman with a hood kind of hanging over her head. And as you guys walk away to the backdrop of a burning building this is where for now we pause our story